Hello there folks, DJ Bergstar here back with another tip of the day. So today I want to talk about the wavetable instrument in Ableton Live. And I probably use this wavetable instrument on every track. At some point I'm either going to use it for a nice lush pad or bass line or a melody line or something. I'm always going to the wavetable. I sort of personally think that as far as a synthesizer instrument in Ableton, it's the best they have to offer. So I want to talk about it and I want to talk about it overall and how to use the controls and how you can make the sound design you want out of it. We're not really going to be making the perfect sound right now because I don't want this video to be two hours long. So let's see how much we can get out of this today. Okay. So let's drag the wavetable instrument onto a track I have here and basically I've just set up a simple MIDI chord pattern um, and here it is, the wavetable instrument. Now uh, let's look at some of the details of this. Um, as you're looking around you may notice that um, in here in the matrix um, this is sort of where you're going to be doing all of the movement of your wavetable instrument um, with these LFOs and the envelopes and things. This is how you're going to get the movement and sort of shape your sound and design it. And the first thing people might want to do is grab the frequency knob and potentially have an LFO modify it. Um, but look, when you're in here, it, it doesn't say frequency or resonance or lots of these other controls. How come they're not in my matrix? So how am I supposed to start working? So let's actually um, cut this out and we'll use one. This is a demo here to show you um, that all those controls are there and there's a way to get to them. So let's put this one on, for instance, that's already been done. And if I click on matrix here, look, look at all these controls. How come they weren't in mine? So here's how they do that. Uh, let's cut this one out. We'll put on a fresh one again. All right. So here it is. Uh, just real quick, let's resize this a bit so you can see. If you right click, you can come down here to high quality. And I like to do that to try and stay as professional sounding as I can. So now we're in high quality mode. Um, okay, so let's show you how they added all those um, controls to this matrix. Um, so what how it works is is if you click on something um, then it shows up. So that's how that works. Now what's weird is is let's say now I see my frequency knob um, and I want to also do the resonance. Uh, the frequency changed. Now it's the resonance knob. So how come that one disappeared? Well how it works is is let's go back to the frequency and if you modify this in any way, just add a tiny bit, even 0.1, um, now when I go to resonance, there, see it added a new lane, I can modify that. So it knows that you've modified it and you're going to be working with that, so it left it there. And I suppose that's a good way of designing this instrument because they don't have everything presented to you if you're not going to be using it. So that's how they work it. Um, now. Most people um, are going to not like sort of the default sound that it comes with. Let's play my chord pattern here. It's just a super simple sine wave um, that's playing. Um, and so obviously you're going to want to modify that. Um, so right away you can pull up this wave position knob and you're sort of combining the sine wave with a square wave and that's starting to give it some character on this oscillator one. Okay, so um, let's turn on oscillator two and you'll see it's grayed out so you have to turn it on and now we have both. I'm sort of going to do the same thing. We'll raise that up so we give it some texture. All right, now they're both playing. But still, it's got kind of a sound I, I'm not totally happy with. Um, so what I might want to do right away is grab this frequency knob and pull it down a bit. 
so it's not quite as sharp. And then I'll probably go in here and start picking some wavetables that are more exciting. Um, right here on Oscillator 2, we're just guessing. We'll just grab whatever for now. Um, we're not going to go into detail about all the different wavetables that you could choose from. Um, but here's an example of a couple that aren't default. Alright, so you can see how different a lot of these sounds are when you start choosing a different wavetable. Okay, great. Um, so, let's say that um, you wanted to start modifying the uh, frequency and start breathing some life into this. Um, you would come over here and since we're going to start putting some LFOs on these things, let's talk about the LFO for just a minute here. Um, so. Here you have it, um, and what I like to do right away is pull this amount down. I don't want it to be wrong completely, you know, going from 100% to zero. Um, so we can turn these down so it's not quite so severe. Um, and then over here, you have hertz versus your kind of tempo. I like to send it to tempo, and then I can sort of put this on maybe two bars, and then LFO 1, maybe I want to set this on, let's put that to maybe every four bars. Uh, so this one will be going slower. Um, just trying to give some movement to this thing here. So um, when I come back to my matrix, um, so I, now that I have LFO, let's see, I have frequency here. I'm going to set this LFO and let's change it up on 1 and see what it does. See it's slowly moving there. Maybe I can make that a little heavier. Okay, great. And like I said, if I click on resonance, I can also maybe grab some LFO on that too. And we're just working on oscillator too. You see, anything you have highlighted here, you're just doing that. And it'll tell you down here too. I'm on filter one, you know, and that kind of thing. So go to oscillator two. Um, and then now, when I'm working with this, I can put that on um, oscillator one see here um, and let's put a wavetable on the position of this so it sort of moves through the wavetable a bit so here we go we'll put some um, on this one you can see it moving there and then on oscillator two maybe we'll go the other direction um, Oops, I did that to oscillator one, sorry. Um, so we'll go to oscillator two, and we'll click here so I can see it. So as soon as you click on something, it'll pop up here because it knows you want to work with it. And we'll give that one an oscillation as well. Okay, so oscillator one and two are now being modified by this LFO, um, and that's great. Okay, so let's talk about more what's going on with these oscillators. Um, over here you'll see that you've got a couple of controls. Uh, this is the volume of each oscillator. And then this C up here is not like the C note or anything. This is center. So this is your pan knob basically. So uh, let's set oscillator 1 a little bit to the left. And we'll put oscillator 2 a little bit to the right and that way you'll get sort of a stereo field with both of these oscillators. And since we were just on the pan knob, look, it added pan down here. So oscillator two pan, let's give that a little bit of LFO as well. So the panning will be changing slightly as it's going as well, and that can add more character. We'll go to oscillator one and do the same thing. Uh, if I click over here, then I can see the pan knob of that, and we'll make it on um, LFO2, and we'll see how that sounds. You'll notice every time it hits a new note or a chord or something, that this sort of jumps. Um, and wh why that's doing that is this is set to re-trigger. So, this oscillator is going up and down, but as soon as you 
it hears a new note, it jumps back to the beginning. And if you're doing a nice melody line or something a little quicker, maybe you want to turn this retrigger off. Um, so it just continues the nice path it was on without jumping. Let's listen. See, that's smooth. It's not just uh, uh, every time. And I kind of like that. Um, maybe I went a little heavy on the LFOs there. Maybe we can pull them back a little bit. Okay, um, so that's sort of how this matrix works. Um, anything you click on, it'll add a new row, and then you can start modifying it um, with these LFOs, which is great. Um, what else is in here um, is your amp, and uh, this is nice to change the attack, uh, so it might come in a little smoother. And again, look, I'll click on attack, and you see how that has these brackets around it? And now I go here, look, there's my attack which is great. Um, I can change that straight from here. Um, or And I can also put other things on it as well, like these LFOs. Let's go back to the amp. And it's, it's sort of applied that. And of course you can do things to the envelope 2 and 3 as well um, with the sustain and the release, you know, the ADSR. Um, and anything that's got a bracket around it will show up in Matrix for you to add movement or anything else you wanted to do. Um, another thing that makes this instrument sort of come to life is over here in this unison section. So if I click on unison and turn it on, um, it will sort of uh, make this instrument potentially sound like a Casio keyboard into this really lush, awesome instrument all of a sudden. So now let's listen now that I've added some of this unison. And again, um, since I can click on unison here, let's see the amount. Look, there's unison. And I can add a little uh, movement there as well. Uh, maybe, um, I don't know, I could have left that blank, I suppose, and just use one of the LFOs I wanted. Um, and so I can even add a little movement to how much of the unison is coming in and out. Okay, now to add a little more depth to your uh, sound that you're trying to make as well, you can hit this sub knob. And this is great because it adds another layer. Let's listen. And of course you would need to be listening on headphones or some good system to hear this bass. What I like to do is turn the tone up just a little bit. In fact, we can turn these oscillators off real quick and just hear the sub for a second. I'll turn it way up so we can hear it for now. And if I change the tone, it sort of brings out a lot more character, character of that low end, um, almost turning it into more of a synth sound. Um, so I like to just add a little tone to it to give it some character so you can kind of hear it back there. Let's turn it down a bit because when we turn the rest on it'll be a bit too loud. Alright, here's where things can get even more interesting. So down here at the bottom, we're on oscillator 1, you also have um, what's called effects. And basically what it's going to do is this wavetable right now is just um, in the background and this thing can kind of morph back and forth between that wavetable. But um, selecting one of these and warping these wavetables 
um, can really change that sound a lot and sort of mangle up that wavetable back there and give you some really unique things to work with. So I'll show you what I mean. So here we go on wavetable uh, or oscillator one and then oscillator two I'll do the same thing. We'll sort of give it some twisting around here. Um, and now listen. And again, look, if this has got a bracket around it, you know, over here, now I'll be able to see that oscillator fold. Um, and so I can add some uh, movements to that as well. Okay. Um, and I also want to say that um, when you hit this arrow here, boom, look at that. You can see everything all at once. Your, all of your wavetables and all of your envelopes and the LFOs all in one huge window. Um, and all of your f effects that you can, I mean, you know, sort of all your controls you can get to all in one window here, which is real nice. Um, so you can see everything, which is great. Um, now, the last thing I want to say about this is there's so many controls in here and so many things that you can do that these two LFOs are great. Um, they have, you know, different shapes, uh, square waves, and different things. Um, so, it, it, you know, this can do a lot. Um, however, since there are so many controls, you can come in and potentially put on another LFO um, in the chain here and what you can do is, is map um, some more of these controls to an LFO um, that's separate from the instrument itself and what's great about this one is it can map up to eight um, at one time so uh, for right now we'll just do one just to show you again let's uh, set this to a potentially a little bit slower rate here um, well, let's see here and what I'll do is is I'll make it so it's not so extreme um, take the depth down a bit and then I can map this let's say over to oscillator 2 we're on so there you go look at that moving and that's from this oscillator um, so not only do you have these um, or sorry this LFO so not only do you have these LFOs, but you can add, you know, more LFOs. Anyway, um, let me get rid of that one for now. Uh, so you can add more LFOs, um, you know, if you wanted to, because this is just so complicated or not complicated, but you know, just so many controls that you can use. So I'll leave it there for today. I hope you uh, got a very good understanding of how the wavetable works. Um, this instrument is, is super awesome, and so you can either choose some presets that are already done, or you can get in here and just start creating your own unique uh, sound from scratch, um, and, you know, putting on your own wavetables, and really customizing this the way you want. So, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you guys on the next one. Uh, DJ Bergstar out.